Right, welcome back to the channel everyone. So today we're going to be having a look at this bad boy, the live Gamer Bolt by Ava Media. The uh, 4K60 external capture card with optional HDR. Plus it records up to 240 frames at 1080p. And you can also do resolutions and frame rates in between. Sort of example, 1440p at 144 frames if you so desire. So you would have just seen the initial setup, where the cables go. It's all very straightforward, you know, it's pretty clear where things go. You want to make sure that the line out is what goes to your TV or monitor. So in my case, it's going to be this one. TV or monitor goes in there like so then the line in is what your whatever console you're using so in this case it's the PlayStation 5 so that will go in there and then the Thunderbolt very simple only one place it will fit goes in there like so so that's how you want the back of your Ava Media to be wired up now I'll skip over to the next little bit quick clip of the RGB on the live gamer bolt as you can see not the best effect you can turn it off and when you start recording it does pulsate red I'll do that just so we're uh, all on the same page and then what we'll do now is go into Google and we'll download the software we'll go through some software options and then I'll do a comparison at the end because I'm still on the fence on whether HDR looks better on the recordings compared to non-HDR. So obviously I'm doing 4K60, that's the whole purpose I got this. So I can record on the PlayStation 5 um, and, and get some very sexy footage. And yeah, so first things first, let's go to Google. We want to type in Ava Media and get over to their website. Da, 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 da. Boom, enter. Then you want to go to support and you want to click here, click here to download. Now I'm not going to do this particular bit because I've already got it, but you click that, usual sort of software installation processes. And then what it will do once you've got it, once you've done that, it'll bring up sort of a box, basically three sort of categories, and you just want to tick everything, download everything, update all the drivers. Boom. And once it's done, you'll have ticks next to everything. It's very straightforward. It will register the device that's plugged in. So you don't need to select a particular device. Very simple, very straightforward. And then once you've done that, you'll end up with something that looks like this. So this is obviously just the, you know, the sort of uh, details about the product that you've got plugged in, whether it's the Live Gamer Bolt, whether it's the Live Gamer Portable 2 Plus, whichever it is, it will come up. It'll tell you if you've got the latest software, etc., etc. This one, you can change resolutions, you can add and you know remove and everything. You can type in, customize the size of your monitor that you're recording off of. And very simple. Um, don't really need to do too much with any of this. HDCP is just, you know, sort of, again, detections on and off, blah, 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 blah. Very straightforward. And then you can check for updates and everything. So this is not really something you'll need to go into once you've done it all. Uh, so we'll minimize that. And just a side note, before we go any further, on the PlayStation 5, same with the PlayStation 4, make sure you go into the options and you turn off the HDCP option. I'll go through that later on, but if you haven't got that switched off, you can't record through your Ava Media, basically. Uh, so now we've done that, we'll open up the main software. So this is what you're going to be using, if you so choose. Obviously, you can use XSplit Broadcast, you can use OBS, but for straightforward recording gameplay, this this works the best with this particular product for me this is what I use and again it's very simple it's kind of the most basic software package I'd say like compared to, compared to XSplit and OBS and things like that which are, you know you can do a lot more with them um, and if you're a streamer they're probably the better platforms for me I just like to record gameplay and do sort of video edits afterwards so this works very well as you can see the PlayStation is already added the live gamer bolt is already added now just a side note again, up here you've got multi and you've got single. Uh, to be able to capture HDR, which you'll see down in the bottom right next to the record symbol, 
uh, you have to have it on single. If you have it on multi, you can still record 4K, you still record 60, you can still do all the different, uh, you know, sort of resolutions and frame rates. You just can't record HDR. So if you want HDR, you got to go on single, which means you can't add a camera or anything like that. Whereas if you've gone to multi, then you can add your cameras, you can add it, you know, all your sort of little widgets and everything like that. Uh, down here where it says available, this is obviously how much space I've got to be able to record. So I've got 8 hours and 11 minutes, so I've got a fair bit. Um, at the moment I've just been leaving it, the recording quality here, I've been leaving it on optimal. Every time I play around with it, if I try and up the bit rate or anything like that, which up in the bit rate will make supposedly the video quality better, I can't really see any difference other than the fact it starts breaking down. Um, you know, sort of, especially in a fast-paced game. Like if I do a racing game, I do a drift or something. It sort of, it starts to break the picture, the image down. So at the moment, until I'm more familiar with it, I'm just leaving it on opt opt uh, on optimal, which by default records 4K 60. And if you click here, you probably won't be able to see this, but basically, the it's just telling me what it's set at. So I've got my audio bit rate at 192. I've got my video bit rate at 150. And if I select HDR, which I'm not going to press this, there is a reason. Because I'm recording through XSplit, as soon as I click HDR, or vice versa if I'm already on HDR, but as soon as I click that button, or pretty much if I select single, because I'm recording elsewhere, it then confuses the device. The device thinks it's in use somewhere else, and it just cuts out and says the device is no longer available. If that happens, it's a very simple solution. Just click the cross. Don't do any other options. Just tick the cross. And then just reload it and it'll reload with all your settings it'll reload with the picture and everything and normally i wouldn't be recording through x split whilst using it so it's not an issue and if you haven't got another recording thing recording it confusing the hell out of it then clicking hdr is just fact just a matter of clicking it on and off and you'll see the picture image just slightly change but when i click hdr on the optimal setting the bit rate will change the bit rate will go to 100 which is a bit odd, on, um, but what that means is you then get more memory to record with as well, um, lower the bit rate, more memory. Anyway, so that's all pretty simple. This is all set up. The Live Gamer Bot will probably show up automatically in here. I will just go through a couple of other options, things you need to just maybe be aware of. So when you click the settings, the little cog icon up here, it'll scroll around and you've got your device here. HDCP detection, doesn't matter if you've got it on or off, I just leave it on because as long as HD TP, uh, HDCP is turned off, it doesn't matter anyway. You got your lighting for the RGB, but it's very limited. You can turn it off, basically, or you can, instead of the sort of rainbow cycle, you can have it so it breathes, supposedly, where it's just where it pulses a different color each time, um, or you can just have it so it only flashes when it records. Now, when you click record, whatever mode you're in, you click record, it will just pulsate red just to let you know, and then you can just speed it up or slow it down. I don't think the RGB is great. I wish I could just set it to a particular color, not have it pulse, not have anything. Just literally, I just want to make it like white or blue or something like that. Just something opposite to the recording. Just make it nice, a bit more classy. And then that's about it in the in these settings. Um, now, again, just one more thing I want to show. Oh, here we go. Device occupied. So now I will demonstrate. Tick the X and just open it again. And if you ever have this trouble, whether you know, if for whatever reason, this normally is the fix. So there we go. It just comes straight back up. It just sort of reboots it, no problem. And if you open this next to the Live Gamer Bolt, this will bring up some options. Uh, you've got your HDR tone mapping, which you can't adjust when HDR is selected. So I don't know. Let me know in the comments down below if you know any different. This brightness meter is sort of a fake HDR for the mode that doesn't have HDR because I don't know if I move it to the side I assume this will work but you'll see the picture go brighter or darker but we're not on HDR and if I click HDR this disappears so I guess the HDR you know, so I'm assuming it's sort of like a fake version I don't really know um, basically but either way it works and to record HDR you have to have this on P10 and you have to have the HDVC file which on optimal it'll do it by default as you can see here, when you click up, uh, click your, your new profile, it'll be as default. So that's basically it for being able to record HDR. As for any other options, there's not really much you need to worry about if you just want to record. As for streaming, like I said, I don't stream too much, um, but it's basically the exact same process, but you'll just click multi. And then down here, 
at the bottom you'll see sort of a plus sign which is where you can go and add it will say devices you can add your cameras it will say websites you can add like a web browser like all these different things you can add to it um, again it's not as in-depth as some of the others but it works for exactly what I want it to do it records 4k 60 looks beautiful but like I said I'm still debating on what's better little pro tip PlayStation 5 I've always been scrolling across trying to get to the options just press triangle boom takes you straight up there never knew that accidentally pressed it cheers popping in so HDCP for those that just need to know where it is you just go down to system go to HDMI and then it will say enable HDCP you want that switched off which it already is I'm not going to switch it on because it will cut out so you just need that switched off basically it's just a copyright um, because on here you can have sort of your Netflix and everything like that if you they don't want you recording through a capture card all the films and everything like that that's all it is so when you turn HDCP off on your PlayStation you won't be able to use those like multimedia apps um, for that sole purpose so if you know just don't forget to turn it back on if you want to go and watch Netflix or anything like that but yeah so what I'll do I'll go through a few games I'll do some Dead or Alive I'll do some Borderlands I'll do some Dirt 5 sort of very colorful games so you can really get that sort of contrast between the HDR um, and then let me know your thoughts like I said just wanted to make a quick video just to help people out I've had a few people question me about how this all works am I happy with it yes I'm very happy with it I'm still playing around with settings like I said at the moment I just leave it optimal now I do have a profile recording quality where I've got an HDR called rad games and I've got just a regular rad games both 4k 60 and I've been playing around with them and sort of doing a video changing the bitrate doing another video changing the bitrate anything over 150 just seems to go a little bit iffy and I'm not entirely sure why because if you look down in the bottom right CPU is fine you know 22% that's nothing to worry about got my RAM I've got 16 on here so you know 8 is plenty and then here it will say your uh, sort of frames per second which is really helpful actually um, so you go into some games what did I go into I can't remember what game it was now I went into a game it dropped down to 52 and it didn't go above 52 so you can sort of you know this Dead or Alive 6 rock solid 60 which is very nice very very nice indeed Resident Evil 2 is now 60 uh, 60 frames a second I didn't even go into any options that just started running at 60 Dirt, uh, Dirt 2.0 Dirt 2.0 won't go above 52 frames a second I'm not entirely sure why Dirt 5 is pretty much a flawless 60 um, but as to be expected it's optimized for the PS5 Borderlands almost a flawless 60 um, I'd say it's a little bit iffy and I've got a few more games to try out um, but whilst we're here actually let's just have a quick look at games I've tested myself that run at 60 so Dead or Alive 60 but I'm pretty sure it was anyway Resident Evil is 60 Borderlands 60 Dirt 5 is 60 Killzone is 60 but only at 1080p Rage 2 pretty certain that was 60 it did look very smooth but again the resolution wasn't great and I couldn't find an option to do you know video mode or not Wipeout is stunning uh, this is one of the smoothest games I've ever played and I think what helps is there's no real rumble so it just feels like it's just beautiful Ghost of Tsushima uh, that's obviously had the patch as well so that's, that's a beautiful 60 uh, absolutely stunning game that is one game where the HDR is beautiful because it really sort of sets that contrast you know the sort of silhouettes and everything very nice Injustice seems to be a 60 Rocket League is pretty much 60 Apex is now 1440p at 60 which is very well I say 60 when I put the in-game sort of frames per second it doesn't go above 59 that's a very strange one uh, I haven't really tried much else to be honest I did try Need for Speed but I haven't actually done a frame rate test on it Maneater is 4k 60 Valhalla I haven't played I bought that for my wife Bug Snacks doesn't interest me Judgment gutted only runs at 30 frames hopefully they'll patch that because that's a stunning game with some great action um, anything else I sort of haven't really been too much further to be honest time for I might give a go but yeah and then there's some proper duds on here but all in all very happy with the PlayStation 5 I wouldn't say the controller is res resolutionary like people think it is um, resolutionary revolutionary you know what I'm trying to say but anyway, we'll get into some gameplay. I've rambled on too long. Hopefully this helps. If you've got any tips for me, please drop them in the comments down below. If you, you know, I'll oh, do your bitrate at this and do this and this. I want 4K60. I'm willing to take a hit on the bitrate if it means I can run that 4K60. Um, but yeah, 
let's get into some gameplay. Let me know what you think.